Any reason why you came out? Yeah, I'm just as good as you. If I needed something, I would have rang the door or called you, right? Maybe. Maybe? It does, it does say push for help, doesn't it? Yeah, go ahead, run the plate, run everything about us, run our names, even though we're not committing a crime. Or you can sit here and harass us all night, that's okay too. Not harass me. Or you could you could have stayed in the building. How did you know we were here? Cameras. So you saw us on the camera and you came out anyway? Yeah. So you crouched down, I don't know if you guys hit something. Oh, no, I was looking at his bumper. What's that? You guys are all set. Yeah, I answered that, Sarge. It's called paying attention to detail. I'm not a sergeant. Well, it looks like, oh, okay. Sorry, quote. Apologize. I don't understand what the attitude is about, though. Because I don't like you guys. I don't like Hinsdale Police. I think you lie on police reports. I think you pull people over for no reason. I think you specifically target people because you're bullies. That's why I don't like you. But I, I will have a decent conversation because I'm known to do that too. But I heard about your department and I just don't like it. Until trust is established, right? Well, no, I agree. Because we have a relatively new department, you guys. How new? In the past like two and a half years. Two and a half years? Two well, half years. most of these issues have happened in the past six months. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you including, know the names? including me. Um, in this uh, lobby a couple couple weeks ago, actually. Really? Yeah. I don't recognize you, so... It wasn't you. It was an older guy. Older guy? Maybe 45. In his 40s. Had gray, short gray hair. Oh, Officer Gallagher. Gallagher? It sounds familiar. I'll have to look on my complaint. What was your, your complaint about? Is there anything I can help you with? No, we came here to watch you guys. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's well, called I'm the, cop watching. I'm the only one on right now, so. Oh, there's only one guy on on Friday yeah. nights? Really? Yeah, we're pretty uh, pretty short staff, so. Well, I'm JP, by the way. I'm Josh. Josh? Yeah. Yeah, no, hey, David. Nice to meet you. This is Chris. Yeah, these uh, they're from uh, Keen Cop Lock, and I'm from SocialVertigo.org. In New England Cop Chases. Heard of the cop block, I didn't hear the social vertigo. Yeah, it used to be New Hampshire regional cop block. Used to be. Yeah. <coughs> cool. So, uh, what's up with you guys sitting in the parking lot of Walmart and yanking everybody you see the past like six months? Because when I, I do the arraignments, I'm at, at court like every week. And I'm constantly seeing like all these violations, barely any OAS. Um, so it's just like inspections and not no, you know, plate lights no being out. I work nights. Hinsdale, 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 Hinsdale. I work nights. You can't see inspection stickers at night, so I have no idea. I do that. But I guess you guys sit right in that little alcove area at Walmart. <laughs> really? Yeah. So who backs you? Who backs you up if you need help? Winchester? Winchester, Chesterfield, Bradbury. Depends where we're at. Who's available? Bradbury. How does that work? Mutually contracts. So it's just pretty much both both towns get together and, and agree on certain certain things. I don't know. It's kind of higher than my head. So. Hey, are you from New Hampshire originally? You're from Keene? Yeah. You look familiar. Yeah. Were you a Keene cop? Nope. No. No? No. I worked for Deluzio for a bit. Oh, so you must know John Martin? John Martin. No? No. He used to be Hillsborough Fire Department, but he's Deluzio now. Oh, did he? Uh, not Hillsborough, uh, uh, Marlboro. Marlboro Fire Department. Yeah. I know Mike Goodwin from Marlboro. J.D. Morris from Marlboro. Okay. Well. Well, that sucks, man. You're all by yourself. <clears throat> it's been like this for a couple of years. It's pretty short staff. Do you so. do you like that? The fact that you're by yourself on Fridays? 
sometimes, yes and no, you know, like when it's a busy night, it just, it, it really sucks, but for the most part, I kind of like, just kind of doing my thing, you know, so. See, I know a lot of the protocols and stuff that Keen has, there's not a cop there, I don't know, uh, first name, um, what the hell do you do when you get an overdose or something, do you call state police detectives to do that? It, that, it all depends. Uh, or do you investigate on, on that the, on your own? Well, it depends on the, on the situation and the circumstance, you know. I think it's kind of like a case-by-case -case thing. So, I mean, there's a, a ton of factors that go into, um, you know, I mean, if something that's going to be like a multi-jurisdictional thing, like, if, you know, multi-states involved or some of that, then we're going to have to call in outside resources. But I mean, if it's going to be like a, if it's like a local person yeah. that we have information on and, uh, and like, just say there was no death involved. They're, you know, we're able to resuscitate them and all that stuff, and we could probably handle it in-house. So, but at the same time, we're so so short-staffed that we, we may call in outside resources it's just not, because we need help. It's not exactly a bad thing that you. Have. I mean, my political opinion: you really don't have time to go after victimless shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Just a real crime. Yeah, just real crime. Victims, crimes. property damage. Yeah. I mean, one incident probably has you tied up all night in paperwork and shit. That's where, that's where I'm at. I had an incident Thursday night, and uh, <coughs> I'm still typing everything up right now. So, so what, what, when's your shift end? Six in the morning. So you're by yourself Dude, all night I long? I go 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So. Yeah. Well, I'll, ret I'll retract the bully thing then. I guess no, that's right. day shift. People have their opinions and they're entitled to their opinions, you know. It's, it's, no, it's not a big deal. Well, if you, if, you, if you look at it, I've cop-locked in a lot of cities, yeah. not just in New Hampshire. Um, cops are combat-oriented, and they only, a lot of them only respond to a really strong, you know, strong, you know, level of conversation. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And usually yeah. they're pretty standoffish and they're kind of jerks by nature because they want to show that authority that's how you train um as soon as you break through that ice like right now we're talking you know you have to kind of you're reading me and i'm reading you and it goes back and forth and that's the problem with community policing it should be community first and not combat oriented first oh, I know. because you came out here because you automatically because of your training you automatically want to check out check it out you know, seeing if there's a suspicious thing going on, why these guys here. It shouldn't be See, like that. It shouldn't be like that. About training. So here's the thing. I worked for Deluzio for about five years as an EMT. Yeah. So I have my training from there. I could see and the bedside manor. And, and I could see it. Yeah, and that's that's more of a community yeah. up here to help type thing, okay? Before Deluzio, I was in the Marine Corps. I did three tours in Iraq with the infantry. Okay. Right? So I have that training as well. Oh, that's interesting. So, okay. Do you do any, so, any stand? What's that? The sandbox? The big no, sandbox? No, no, I didn't go over there. No, we got stuck in Iraq, so. Um, Ramadi, no, huh? Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, I definitely see what you're saying. I can see, and as an FTO, as a training officer, you know, you get a lot of these new guys that come up and, and they, they try to establish that. And it's like, just gonna settle down. You know, just, if you come in all hog wild like that, you're gonna rile everybody up. Just come in. I seen go. I seen Keen because I started going after Keen police before Free Staters and all that. Yeah. We're talking like 2007. I've had over 100 complaints dating back to 07. That's before Free Keen and Free State Project and all the Free right. Staters. Right. Um, I've seen a massive shift um, because most of them I could sit there and talk with them all night long, um, and I'm friends. You know, I, I get along with a lot of them. Right. Um, and the, some of the old crews are just, you know, they're either retiring or they're going to other towns. Yeah. And uh, I've seen a, a shift since Brian Costa has been in. He's been telling them because he's a very friendly type of guy anyway. Right. Um, if you ever met him when he was a cop and not a chief, you know, he, you know, he, he's got that soft, soft approach like what you're saying. And that's that's the only way you can get cooperation when really, really bad stuff happens. Now, when you go to communities like Franklin mm -hmm. or even Winchester, nobody in Winchester trusts the police there. Nobody. 
you could talk to a business owner all the way down to a drug dealer and they'll feel the same exact way you don't get that in Keene um, and and that's that's what needs to happen see I'm not out here to delegitimize government I'm here to minimize the revenue based stuff so you can concentrate on the real crime and helping people and you know, establishing because you are community. See, right now as we stand, I can't help you in a traffic stop or I can't jump in or I'm breaking all kinds of laws. It shouldn't be like that. It should be community and civilians first and then, you know, public officials second because that's the way the New Hampshire State Constitution's written. We're up here and the, uh, you know, public officials below the, the average citizen. And that's the way it needs to be. But Franklin and Manchester and Nashua, you know, Spend some time with those cops. You'll see a dramatic change, man. Uh, and, and I don't take, that, take their environment as an excuse. I think the environment's created by what they, you know, you know attitude reflect leadership, man. If you're, if you're out there, you know, hammering on people all the time, you're going to get no respect back. And that it boils down and then it, it passes from generation to generation. We saw that in Ferguson. And all hell broke loose there. Nobody even... Yeah, you, know, you wear a badge, you're gonna get, you know, torn down by yeah. someone that makes a million a year down to like an average citizen. So, I'm I'm glad you have that approach. It really shows a lot, well, the, the and the public needs to see that. It needs well, to see that. Well, nice. Right. The thing, the thing that I think I, I try to tell a lot of my trainees, the people that I train, is that you have to remember that regardless of whatever situation you're in, you're still dealing with people that make mistakes to have bad days, to have their own issues going on, and you have to take a lot of that stuff into consideration as well, you know, like, they're, just because this person, you know, is burglarizing this house, whatever, doesn't mean that they're a, a criminal, it just means that there isn't a role point in their life and they might need help getting back up or something like that. So Man, you they need, that, to, you know, they need so. to put you the head of the training and standards uh, sensitivity training program that they have in Concord, <laughs> Yeah, well, that's just my opinion, but... I'll leave you guys to it. How long you been here? Um, since 2013. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I've been, right, well, I've been on ice pretty much the whole time, so I don't really see too many people. So. All right. Yeah, I'll leave, leave you guys to it. I gotta take care of the fireworks. It's, it's Josh, right? right? Yes, Josh. All right. Nice meeting you. Hey, you as well. To show you that's not a shotgun. It's hunting, right? Hunting season. It's hunting. Yeah.